Hey guys, I'm Alex from Zaxworks. In the last tutorial, I showed you how to model and texture a 3D version of the iPhone 5S. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to animate the iPhone and play a video on its screen. And remember, this is all being done live directly inside of After Effects. This is where we left off last time. We have a camera and a pro animator layer. We're going to start by just deleting the camera. We don't need it for now. And with this layer, we'll turn off Use Comp Camera. So we'll start by opening up the setup window inside Pro Animator because we need to add a screen to this iPhone. Uh, what it's going to be is it's going to be an object that's just sitting right in front of that iPhone and then we'll put a video onto that screen, onto that, that object. So we'll go into our modeling workspace, turn off the background picture just for now, and make sure that this body, this little eye right here is turned on. So now we see our iPhone. This is just the texture being applied to it. So we'll start off by going over to the top left corner and selecting our shape tool and select the rectangle shape tool. We'll then drag from the top left corner down to the bottom right corner, auto scroll down and let go in the bottom right corner. All right, good. So now you see you can't actually see it because it is inside the iPhone. Uh, we'll start off by taking our depth down to zero because the iPhone screen is just going to be a a single layer. You know, it's going to be right in front, just sitting right in front of it. We don't need, need any depth. So we'll take that down to zero. We'll then open up our info area and move it in the Z direction. So you see that's where it is. This is where it is right here. We're just going to move it right in front of our iPhone screen. Perfect. So now that we're done with the actual modeling part, that was hard, right? Uh, we're going to actually take a After Effects layer and use it as a texture. It's called layer mapping. It's taking a After Effects layer and texturing it, putting it on as a material onto our 3D object. We'll do this by clicking OK, going into our 3D scene, into our After Effects scene. OK, so we go to File, Import, File. We're going to import our footage. I have this Pro Animator 7 example reel. Of, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it's pretty awesome. Just showing off our new features of lighting and whatnot. Pretty sweet stuff. Um, I'll select that layer comes into our comp and I'll bring it into our comp area. Now what we have to do is we have to tell the program saying this is what we are going to hook up to our layer map one. We'll do that by going to our pro animator layer, going to effect controls, layer maps, and selecting layer map one and selecting our pro animator seven example reel. That is the same as this layer right here. So we'll select it and all the work is done. <laughs> that took care of it for us. We, all we have to do now is tell the program to put layer map one onto the front of the screen and the this movie will automatically be put onto that screen. Pretty easy stuff. So we'll go back up here into our Pro Animator setup window to apply our layer map. We'll go to our material uh, workspace. And now we have to tell the program, get layer map one on here. The way we do that is we create a material with layer map one in it. Uh, since there is already a material here, we'll create a new material. We'll take the base color to black just to make things look a little nicer. Um, and what you can do now is you can either, if you would click on this button right here, you can now load an image, load in an image. You would just select any image out here and it would load it in. However, we want to load in a video and that can't be done through here. We have to do it a different way through layer mapping. We'll hit cancel. And if you didn't open up this area, you could click on this plus button to open up this shader area. But right now we have the shader area open and we'll click on the shader menu item and you can select different types of shaders. You can click a color shader, any types of colors, an image, a gradient, different types of noises, um, or a grid, or at the very bottom we can click layer map one. Great, so now we see layer map one and all we have to do is take this material and drag it onto our object and let go and there it is. So now when we hit OK, back in After Effects the actual video will be mapped onto this screen. Really easy. However, the problem with this layer is that it is a vertical right now and it is a horizontal film, horizontal movie. So what we need to do is we need to click on our layer and rotate it 90 degrees just so that it can it can fit the way we want it to. Great, pretty easy. Um, and the last thing we're going to do is that in UV proportional, this is the setup, this is the, the regular mapping default, um, but what we want to do is we actually change it to UV fit. What UV proportional does is it takes the object and it, it'll it'll keep its proportions as it maps it on but that means that it won't actually 
crop it, it won't crop any of the image so sometimes you have to you have to mess around with the scale uh what uv fit will do is it'll it might stretch or squish the image but it'll make sure that that image is perfectly fit onto that object we want that for now since we don't know how big our image or how big our um screen is so we'll just hit uv fit and click ok and now we see that automatically our movie is being cast onto our screen really nice easy stuff you might happen to notice that there's this huge movie going on in the back. That's just because we have it visible in our layer. All we have to do is click this icon, this uh, visibility icon. It'll turn it off and it'll still apply it as a layer map. That is no problem there. Great. So now we have our movie playing and now we need to actually animate our iPhone. We can do that by clicking on the Pro Animator button again to open up the setup window. Inside here, this is where all the animation beauty is going to happen. It's pretty easy. So the first thing we have to do is we can we have to look at our object list right here. If you don't see this workspace, you can get to it by just clicking on the material uh, workspace right here. And what it'll do is is right now my object is all in the same track. That is because I had this track selected when I started drawing. However, if I didn't have it selected when I started drawing, I'll just show you by going to the modeling workspace and start drawing something, it creates a new track for that object. This is bad when you want to animate all the objects together. It might be good if you're trying to animate them separately, but right now we want them all together. The easiest way to put them all together is just by dragging and dropping them with this, this yellow line all at the same track, and now they can be animated together. I'm going to delete this layer because it's a nothing square. Yes. And now the before we actually animate it we need to make sure that all of them are hooked up they are all in the same layer but they're not actually hooked up together the way to do that is pretty easy we are going to thing called parenting so we'll take this lock button and we'll hold on the shift key to select all four of these objects right here and we'll drag them on top of body let go and now we see that they're indented which means they are children of this body so first select this body and if we come over here you can see that all these objects move together nicely now that looks good however we see that they are moving around a common center in the middle we don't want this middle we want it to pivot around the bottom right corner i'll hit reset for this and the way to do this is to make sure that body is selected and we can move around with the pivot position there's a red dot going around here that's moving around i'll, I'll zoom in a little tighter so we can see and as we bring it down to us, we see that this is a, a red crosshair in 3D space. What, it, what this is, is it, uh, it just tells us where our pivot is going to be. So we'll make sure this pivot is on the bottom left corner. Try to get it, you know, somewhat exact. Just kind of has to be around that area. Now, when you click on rotation and move it, it'll move it around that pivot position. Nice and easy. Reset again. Okay, so since we have the pivot set up, we can now animate it. So go into our animation workspace and move our time marker to time zero, our start time marker, and double click around three to create a new pose. And what you can do now is you can animate this pose position and the transition will take care of all the movement for you. It's pretty much like, like keyframes, except we have more than one object per pose. So think about all these objects are in the single pose. That's really, really nice and easy. So we'll take this rotate around common center. We'll rotate it negative 90 degrees. So it is sit, you know, sitting horizontal. And now if I zoom out here, we can see that our object is starting up vertical and rotating over horizontal. Awesome. So one more thing before we go back into After Effects is I'm going to make sure that the transition is a little nicer. It's kind of, it, it'll start looking a little clunky, a um, little, little too forced out if we don't do something to the transition. What we can do is we can add some ease. Hopefully you know what some ease is. We'll crank up the ease start up to 10. This is just when the ease is going to start. And this is the ease finish. So this is where the ease is going to finish around 70. These are nice nice starting and ending numbers. Um, I'm going to leave the ease amount around 50. And now we can see it, it slowly comes in, gets up to full speed, and then slows down right before it hits there. So we'll play that to show you. And that looks a lot nicer than just the constant speed the entire time. <clears throat> All right, so now let's hit click OK to go back into After Effects, and we now see that our object is actually upside down. So this is a trick you have to figure out if if you accidentally put rotate your objects a different direction. Easy way to fix this is just come in here into your setup window, go back to your layer map. You see that layer map is upside down. 
come into materials, select your material, and rotate it the other direction. I'm just going to delete it, so 90 degrees. Click OK. All right. So now we see that we have an iPhone that is horizontal, and it has an image put onto it that's horizontal. That's great. However, when the iPhone is vertical, we now get a vertical iPhone with a horizontal image. This does not work because we can now not read the image or view the image or video. So what we need to do is we need to rotate the image. That's what iPhones normally do. They rotate the image automatically for you. So we can do that, but it's not as easy as just coming in here and clicking transform and rotating your image because what's happening is Pro Animator is looking at the original pixels of the movie it is not looking at the transformed pixels. The way to do this to make this work is to pre-compose the layer. When you pre-compose it, it will uh, read in the the transformed and effects, you know, transformed uh, it will read in the transformed data and you know any effects applied to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit undo. We'll close this up. Make sure your Pro Animator 7 example real .mov is selected. Go up to Layer and then Precompose. Make sure move all attributes into new composition selected and click OK. Now we see we have this cool comp icon logo. We will then double click on it to open up the composition. And now any transformations we do inside here will be automatically updated inside of our iPhone screen. So we'll rotate it just to see what it looks like come over here and we can see we, it automatically updates the picture. How cool, how fast, that is great. So now let's do the actual rotations we need. We'll come back here, click on do, and we're going to start off by fixing this video a little bit. It's a little too dark for me in the beginning. Um, i rather have the video start somewhere around here. It looks a lot prettier around here, so let's start it around here. All you have to do is you can click on where you want, you will drag it to the front, and now we see it is it, it starts here and somewhere over here and comp one automatically updates for us how easy great next we have to flip the we have to rotate the actual video so let's do that so we need to find out where it needs to be horizontal where the video needs to be horizontal which is right around here great so we will turn on our keyframes right there just by clicking on the little stopwatches Come back to our comp one and find out where it needs to be vertical. Right there. And then I will rotate it 90 degrees and scale it down. And now we have an image that looks like this and then it rotates into the spot and it will automatically update for us so that we now have an image that is hor that is vertical and now it's horizontal, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned how to easy it is to model 3D objects, how to use After Effects layers as live editable textures on your 3D objects, and how to animate your 3D objects. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at zaxworks.com. See you soon.